NASA Administrator Bill Nelson pointed to a series of U.S. military encounters with unknown flying objects, many which defy the laws of our own known technology, in his agency's mission to seek out life beyond Earth. Meanwhile, Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego is calling on the Pentagon to take UFOs seriously. The Arizona Democrat and Iraq War veteran is pushing legislation in the House that would require a permanent office under the Secretary of Defense to oversee, quote, the timely and consistent reporting of what the military calls unidentified aerial phenomena, and it must share what it learns with Congress at least once a year. Congressman Gallego joins us now to discuss this a little bit more. Thanks for being here, Congressman. Thank you. So is it, your, uh, is it your belief, your understanding, based on you know, the information you've been privy to, it, there, there, there is information that the Pentagon has, that the authorities have, that, is, that has not been shared with, with either Congress or with the American people? Is, is there really a lot there? Is, is, is there a lot we would be, would be shocked about if we, if we, if we were <laughs> ca- able to hear about because, and, and the, 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 if the Pentagon was more transparent? So let me tell you where the genesis of my legislation comes from. So I'm the chairman of Intelligence Special Operations, for which some reason UAPs or UFOs, as as people know, know, fall under my jurisdiction. So I had a hearing regarding this. And one of the things that was very clear about it is that we just don't have enough information. And even that the information the Department of Defense has is is useless information. It is it is, you know, anecdotal evidence and or even, you know, film, whatever it is. But they, we have no reference points to it, uh, and there is no unified way to actually collect this information. Nobody knows what to do with this information, uh, and so the reason I put this legislation together is because we need to treat this as a real problem set, not that you know maybe these foreign you know aliens or out of out of world aliens are are a threat. The problem set is that we don't have enough information to make any decisions. So the way you do that is you actually gather the information so that way you can actually you know have some viable actions on it. And you've said that there's kind of a disorganized, disparate set of people who are within the Pentagon who are just kind of generally curious about this, but nothing really, really organized. Like, what is what is your understanding of 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 the the level of curiosity and seriousness with which the the Pentagon takes this? And have you have you identified people who have been particularly useful for you as as you've been, you know, engaging in your inquiry and investigation and legislating? So no, largely there hasn't been any level of seriousness to this. It's largely, you know, mostly the Air Force that's taking this information and somewhat the Navy and then kind of just, you know, shuffling it off in a report. And the other thing is because we haven't really made a formal process to this, a lot of, you know, military men uh, and women, uh, you know, just don't want to say anything because they're afraid that it will affect their career. So we have, you know, uh, you know uh, information bias happening right now. So the only information we're getting are from people that want to talk. Uh, the people that probably have more information are afraid to talk. And then even if they do talk, the information goes nowhere. There's no follow-up. There's no, uh, you know, someone that is trying to put their brain power on this. And that's the goal of this, right? The goal of my legislation is to treat this like a real problem set. And the way you do that in, in when you're dealing with the Pentagon is you have a system-wide understanding of how to collect this information, how to collect this data, let's analyze the data, and then let's come up with recommendations about what, what this is and what we should do uh, about it. Because right now, it's uh, it's really unfair, I think, for the NASA uh, administrator to speculate that it is, uh, you know, uh, you know otherworldly uh, objects uh, or aliens. Uh, because it, it, data doesn't prove anything like that. And, you know, over the last year plus or so, you know, we've gotten these wave of reports and, and leaks and, and information around UAPs. You know, what, what do you think is driving that, given the the lack of seriousness that you encounter with the Pentagon? Generally speaking, whenever you see leaks, especially when you see leaks at the Pentagon, is you ha- it's from frustration that uh, for some reason, either A, they've gone through their chain of command, the chain of command is not doing anything about it, or B, their frustration that, you know, generally the public or even Congress is not taking this seriously. Uh, and I think uh, it's getting to a point, and, and because uh, you know, we are a more interconnected uh, society. You have a lot of people that are flying. You have a lot of people that have can actively use their own drones. They can actively, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can even now rent satellite imagery. More people are starting to discover this, and I think that is setting a uh, setting up a, a, a course where you know, if we don't actually start answering questions uh, or at least looking for what the question should be, 
you're going to have people jumping to some you know really uh, bad conclusions. Do you think the resistance to sharing information that that the feds have is it just you know the same kind of sort of ideological or technocratic or whatever resistance to sharing information about anything in general or is it more tailored or specific to this they don't want you to learn about this specifically I think it's actually more more than anything else is cultural um, because we've never treated UAPs as a serious issue no person wants to be known as the UFO general right or the be the person who's director of UFO uh, information because in, that basically sets your career path in the military, which is, you know, especially in the Pentagon, uh, there's certain things you have to do and certain ways you have to do in order for you to keep moving up. Uh, and so everyone just avoids it. Everyone just avoids the issue. Politicians avoid the issue. Uh, and and so everyone just kind of just walks around in circles and saying, man, there's something there, but nobody wants to do anything about it. Right, so, because it's treated like that's we're you know synonymous with aliens or something. We're, it's not. I don't think we're expecting to learn that like extraterrestrials are being dissected at Area Fifty One. We're, we're right. expecting to learn that a, a lot of people in our in our armed forces and others have have seen things that right. they cannot explain what that is. It could be a technology from a foreign government, from our own government that's very secret. For something doesn't doesn't mean aliens. It just means something we don't have an explanation for. Correct. And everyone even avoids that. And that's the bigger problem. Like we may be dealing with foreign, uh, you know, and when I mean foreign, other countries' technology, but because, you know, the Marine Corps Air, uh, you know, Marine Corps Air does not talk to the, you know, the Air National Guard in Hawaii and compare notes, uh, and they may have seen the same thing, we can't even put the data together to really figure out what's happening. Like right now, there's so many commercial drones, satellites, uh, low altitude balloons. That, are, that cause a lot of these things, but we can't actually really put enough patterns together for us to be able to say, oh, you know what, don't worry about that uh, that signature on the radar. That's probably an Amazon you know, balloon or something like that. Uh, again, because no one takes this serious. Uh, and so this is why I put that legislation in, to actually treat this like you would treat any other problem in the DOD. That, the cultural explanation is the most coherent one I think I've ever heard, we, because I can I could totally see that nobody wants to be the alien colonel um, because right. Because then exactly. they're going to stay the colonel. You know, they're not. Right. That that's that's where they plateau. So, does the how does the legislation grapple with that cultural resistance? Well, it does uh, create an office within the Department of Defense. Uh, it creates a mandate to uh, talk to Congress, which then kind of creates the seriousness of it, um, and also obviously mandates and creates the position. So, if you create a position without the mandate to Congress, then you're going to have Again, the DOD putting someone in a broom closet and and you know not not talking to us. Uh, and then lastly, it sets standards across the forces for them to have a standardized way for them to collect this information uh, and and use it and try to you know to to analyze it. Uh, again, because right now, if you're in the Army uh, and you see something, and you know if you're in the Air Force and you see something, there's no way for you to input that information into any database so you could compare notes, right? That's crazy. We would never do that in any type of other scenario that's affecting, potentially affecting our national security. And is the mandate to speak to Congress one of the kind of perks and cultural accoutrements that go with these positions that then yes. give it the cultural cachet inside the military that this becomes then desirable and then people yes. are, then, okay. Well, that's actually why I put it in there is because, you know, the pro your proximity to Congress with the DOD is a very important in terms of your help moving through the Pentagon, uh, you know, uh, bureaucracy. Uh, and so being able to talk to members of Congress, it makes your position more serious, you create relationships, and therefore becomes more desirous uh, uh, position to, to take uh, versus, you know, uh, someone that just gets thrown in there as, you know, as either an end of career move or someone who is just not uh, attuned for this. And so if the, if the Pentagon is a snake pit, this is sort of snake charm legislation trying to Yes, I'm playing, playing music right now. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you, thank you so much for uh, joining us, Congressman. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have a good one. And we will have more rising right after this.